detectives. Now the first thing to say, of course, is that the wait is almost over. The eighth murder mystery in my Murder Most Unladylike Mysteries series, Top Marks for Murder, is coming in less than one month. On the 8th of August this year, Top Marks for Murder is going to be released in the UK and Ireland, and of course you will not be able to miss it because it looks like this. It is so beautiful. It has gold foil. It has beautiful sprayed edges. So it is not just coral on the cover. It is coral literally all over. You will not be able to miss this book in stores. And it's going to, of course, look really great with the rest of the series. I am very excited about this book. This is the third school murder mystery that I have written about. This is the third book that takes place at Deep Dean School for Girls, Daisy and Hazel's School. And in this book, Deep Dean is in more peril than ever before because of course it is the scene of the crime for the third time and people who run schools are not happy in general about murders happening at the school they run and the fact that this is the third murder that has happened at this school is very concerning to all the people who run it and so in this mystery Daisy and Hazel have to solve the case super quickly because if they do not work out what happened Deep Dean School will close forever. It is a book that I am so proud of writing. I loved going back to Deep Dean one last time to give Daisy and Hazel their third murder mystery there, and I can't wait for you to read it. The next part, of course, is to tell you a bit about what I have been reading, what books I have picked to recommend to you this month. And for once, I'm actually going to start with a section I usually do at the end, the classics section, where I talk to you about one of my favourite books from my own childhood, a book that made me, that shaped me into the author I am now, and tell you why you should read it. I'm going to do that section first. So this month, my classic pick is The Wonderful Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. And the reason why I have chosen that particular book is because I have a book out this month. Me and 10 other authors all have a book out this month, and it is Return to Wonderland. We all love Alice in Wonderland so much. It shaped our lives so much that we have all agreed to write our own short stories about one of the characters in Alice in Wonderland and Alice Through the Looking Glass. My short story is about Alice's big sister, Ina. Now, Alice was a real girl, actually. She wasn't just a book character, even though we now think of her as just someone made up by Lewis Carroll. She was a real little girl who actually lived in Oxford a hundred years before I lived in Oxford. And she grew up in Christchurch College, Oxford, and I grew up in Pembroke College, Oxford. So we would have been neighbours if we hadn't been born about a hundred years apart from each other. I reread Alice in Wonderland when I was working on my short story, of course I did, and it made me remember how much I loved this book. It is so well written, it is so bizarre, it is so compelling. But the thing that I had sort of forgotten was how creepy it is. It's quite a weird story, it's quite an uncomfortable story. Alice is always being told off by the characters that she meets in Wonderland. They are always being really mean to her, they are trying to eat her, they are trying to behead her, they are trying to hurt her. Of course Alice is a brilliant heroine. She never gives up, she always fights on, she never gives in to the people who want to hurt her. But when I reread Alice in Wonderland, I noticed how many people there really are who do wish her ill, who do want to hurt her. And I thought that was quite interesting because I think I remember Alice in Wonderland as being much sweeter, much kinder. I think I watch the Disney movie too often and I think of it as a really nice, fun story, which it is. It's very funny, it's very clever, but it's quite dark and it's quite scary at times as well. And so my story, Ina Out of Wonderland, hopefully is fun, is clever, I hope you really enjoy it, but it is also a little bit scary. I wanted Ina to be really worried about Alice stuck in Wonderland. I wanted Ina to be somebody who knew how dangerous Wonderland could be. So in my story, Ina is desperately rushing around Christchurch College, the college where obviously she is growing up, where Alice lives, and where I used to visit a lot of the time, rushing around Christchurch College to try to drop things into the world of Wonderland that will help Alice. And all of the things that she puts into Wonderland are things that I think you'll recognise from the original story. So I've tried to connect my story 
with the Alice in Wonderland story that I think we all know really well. If you haven't ever read Alice in Wonderland, I really think you should. It is a fantastic piece of writing. It is still fun more than a hundred years later. And even if you have read it before, I would encourage you to read it again because it's a quick read. It's really smart. It's really interesting. And I bet you will notice stuff that you never noticed before when you read it again. I would say that Alice in Wonderland is pretty perfect for anyone five plus. It's great for somebody to read to you, it's great to read on your own, and of course with all my recommendations there is no upper limit. You should still be reading Alice in Wonderland and all the other children's books I recommend when you are in your 80s and 90s. You should never stop reading children's books. And Return to Wonderland, the anthology that I have helped write for Macmillan, illustrated by Laura Barrett with these 11 fantastic authors, is out now. Uh, it is, I think, perfect for anyone sort of six, seven plus, or maybe even five. I think it would be good to read out loud. I think it's great for adults who have loved Alice in Wonderland, great for children who have just discovered Alice in Wonderland. So pretty much I would say this is perfect for anyone. And it is in beautiful hardback. It looks just lovely and it even has a little ribbon, which to me is the height of sophistication for a book. My next pick is a book that I've been excited about for a very long time and I got to read a special early copy of. It is a book called The Dragon in the Library by Louis Stoll and illustrated by David Ortu. The finished copies don't look quite like this. Uh, there is a lovely picture of Kit, the main character here, uh, surrounded by library books, but of course the title is the same and it's got this nice bright colours on it, so you should not be able to miss this book in stores. This book is the story of a girl called Kit. Kit lives in London with her two best friends, Josh and Alita. Now Josh and Alita are huge bookworms. They love reading, they love the library. Kit on the other hand, is much less convinced. Kit does not really like reading. She'd rather be running around outside. But Josh and Alita convince Kit to go to the library and off they go on the first day of their summer holidays. It's a new library. It's not a library they've been to before because their normal library has just been closed down. In this book's world, just like in our world at the moment, libraries are being closed all the time. And in fact, this library, the one they're going to, the Chatsworth Library, is also being threatened with closure. Kit, Josh and Alita arrive at the library where they meet a librarian called Faith, who seems quite an interesting person, but Kit doesn't really that interested in her uh, until she picks up one of the books in the library, a fact book about dangerous animals, and she suddenly finds herself inside the book. She is standing there in one of the pages being menaced by the enormous snake and she's horrified until she is pulled out of the book again by Faith. And Faith turns around and tells her that she is not just a librarian. Faith is also a wizard and so is Kit. Kit, for all she hates books, turns out to be a new wizard. And in this world, wizards move around the world through books. Librarians are basically wizards. Kit has to learn how to love books very quickly and she also has to learn how to navigate this confusing world where she can step in and out of books, she can move between books. It is so fast-paced, it is so much fun, I love all the characters. I think my very favourite character is a character called Dogon, who is a dog but also a dragon. And I love Dogon because when I was younger I used to draw dragons all the time, I was fascinated by them just like I think Louis is. And when I drew them they all looked like dogs because I had dogs and I love dogs and my two favourite things were dogs and dragons and so my dragons always kind of look like dogs. So I love Dogon, I love this world, I love the idea of being able to step into a book that you're enjoying and walk through its pages. And I also love the message in this about how important libraries are. This is something that I spend a lot of time talking about as an author. Libraries are amazing. You can go into them and get books out for free. You can discover things, you can find out amazing facts, you can lose yourself in stories, and you can just sit in libraries for hours without paying any money and read there, take a nap there, do playgroups there. They are amazing resources. I use my library almost every week. I love getting out new books from my library and I would be devastated if it closed. I know that a lot of libraries in the UK are being threatened 
with closure and a lot of really brilliant people are fighting to keep them open. I think this book is brilliant. It's fast paced, it's funny, it's clever, and I really, really enjoyed reading it. Louis happens to be one of my dearest friends, so I'm so proud of her, what she's achieved here, and I know that you will really enjoy this book as well. It is perfect for anyone six plus who likes dragons, who likes wizards, who likes magic. This book is perfect for anyone six plus who loves wizards and magic, who loves imagining different worlds to fall into. It's perfect for anyone who loves books and I also think it's great for people who aren't quite as sure about books, just like Kit is not at the beginning of this story. The next book I've chosen is short and sweet and wonderful and it is Owen and the Soldier by Lisa Thompson. Now this of course is again a proof, it's an early edition. The finished cover has a beautiful illustration by Mike Lowry of Owen and the Soldier who is a stone statue. They're sitting next to each other in the park. This is a book published by a publisher called Barrington Stoke and Barrington Stoke creates books with people with dyslexia especially in mind. They print their books on dyslexia friendly paper that's thick so the text from the next page doesn't sort of uh, bleed through. They use dyslexia friendly type. They do everything they can to make sure that these books are incredibly easy to read in terms of actually looking at the words on the page. And they have a really impressive list of authors who have written stories for them. And Lisa is just one of those authors. Now Lisa, of course, is the author of three other books, including The Light Jar and The Goldfish Boy. And I think she is a fantastic writer. I love her books. And this was no exception. Of course, I read it very fast. It's a very quick, easy read, uh, but it really touched me and it really stayed with me. This is a book about Owen who lives with his mum and Owen and his mum are really struggling. His mum is just finding it so difficult to get out of bed in the morning. She is so sad all the time and Owen doesn't know how to look after. He doesn't really know how to look after himself and he doesn't know how to speak up and say what is happening. And at the same time, he is really struggling at school. His teacher wants him to read poetry out loud. His teacher wants him to do public speaking. And Owen is horrified by this. He hates the idea. He doesn't feel like he likes anything, that he doesn't have anything he wants to write about. And then one day he goes to the park and he discovers the statue of a soldier, a stone soldier, um, carved to look like somebody from World War One. And Owen starts talking to this soldier. He tells the soldier all of his problems. He feels like the soldier is listening to him. He feels like this soldier is one of his closest friends. But he discovers that the soldier's statue is about to be torn down. A local councillor wants to regenerate the park and that means getting rid of the soldier and Owen is distraught. And he suddenly realises that he might have something worth speaking up about after all. He might have something that is his favourite that he wants to talk about and tell the world about. So this is the story of how Owen finds his voice. This is the story of how Owen and his mother learn to cope with their lives. It is so moving, it is so beautiful, and I really, really enjoyed it. It's a very thought-provoking, lovely book. I would say this is perfect for anyone eight plus who loves Lisa's other books, who loves books that gives them something to think about, who loves books about people who feel like them and their friends. This is a book I think it's very easy to connect to. I think it's easy to see a bit of Owen in all of us. Uh, I loved this book. I cried at the end and I think you probably will too. Now my last pick for this month is a book that is really for adults. It is a non-fiction book but it is so perfect for me. It is so perfect for the books that I write and I suspect so perfect for the people who read them that I couldn't not mention it. It is The Adventures of Maud West Lady Detective by Susanna Stapleton. This book is basically the story of the quest that the author Susanna Stapleton goes on to discover who Maud West is. Because Maud West was a real person. Maud West was a woman who ran a detective agency in London in the 19 teens to 1930s. Which of course, you can see why I love this book, uh, Maud West was a real life Aunt Lucy. She was a real life Daisy and Hazel, or the people who Daisy and Hazel are going to grow up to become. 
The story starts when Susanna discovers just a tiny mention of Maud, just basically an advertisement that shows that there was a lady detective called Maud West. And then as Susanna starts digging in further, she discovers that Maud West is somebody who loved to tell stories, somebody who loved to tell the true stories of her exploits as a detective. And Susanna becomes really fascinated with these stories because they seem like such tall tales. They read like, like a sort of Sherlock Holmes short story. They're that fantastical. It's got Maud hiding under bare rugs and Maud shooting people in the face and Maud fleeing to South America. And those are wonderful, but they don't really seem like they could be true. And so Susanna starts digging into the truth of Maud West, what her life was really like, not the life that she's painting for all the people in the newspaper she's writing for, but her real life. And the story of her real life is fascinating, and it's really unexpected as well. And this whole book really feels like a mystery being unraveled in front of you. It feels like a whodunit. It feels like something you just want to keep reading. It doesn't really feel like nonfiction. It feels like a story you're being told by Susanna. And I think that is why I'm recommending it to you, because if you love mystery stories, if you love solving problems, and if you love history, this is perfect. It's a real historical mystery. It helps uncover a lot of things about the early part of the 20th century that I didn't even know about. And I have done a lot of reading about the 1920s and 1930s, and there were things in here that really surprised and fascinated me. I would say this is perfect for anyone 12, 13 plus. It's beautifully researched. It's beautifully written. It's very lightly done. You don't feel all the scholarship that has gone into creating, although of course you know that Susanna has done an astonishing amount of research. So it's a very easy read. And I think when you are creating nonfiction, especially historical nonfiction, that is a really hard thing to do. So I'm incredibly impressed with this book. I enjoyed it immensely. And any history nerds out there, any detective nerds out there will just love this book. So that's all for me for June. I will be back next month with more videos, more recommendations, more exciting things to tell you about. Uh, but until then, goodbye.